Ottoman Fisk. Here. Ottoman Braithwaite. Here. Ottoman Wynn. Here. Ottoman Wilson. Here. Ottoman Holmes. Here. Ottoman Tendum. Here. Ottoman Grover. Here. Ottoman Rainey. Here. Nine to zero. We have a quorum. Welcome to the Monday, May 23rd, 2011 meeting of the Evanston City Council. Uh, first, as mayor, proclamations and public announcements. And I would like to announce that Evanston's own uh, Yvonne de Thomas is the winner of the Evanston Idol for a year. Congratulations, Yvonne. Would you like to sing? I would like to sing you, thank you. <laughs> Give me another time with this. Well, we'll put it on the agenda for, for another meeting, and then she'll have to sing. Uh, Actually, Alderman Grover had said that she thought that all of the presentations, if I remember from Human Services, should be presented yeah, musically. Yeah. Is that not yeah. right, yeah. Alderman yeah, Grover? You're yeah. absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Alderman Holmes, I think, would pre present right. a new challenge to I all of our <laughs> well, people here before us. Uh, I have asked that we all receive an email uh, telling us when we can watch this, uh, apparently. And hear it. And hear it. It will be broadcast <laughs> again, mm -hmm. hopefully again and again. Congratulations. I understood it was to be rebroadcast tonight at 10 o'clock. So we could entertain people in the Aldermanic Library if this Or we ends. could finish the meeting by then. <laughs> <laughs> if this meeting ends early enough. Uh -huh. Uh, my next announcement is congratulations, City Clerk Mr. Green. He has won the International Institute of Municipal Clerks Award for Excellence in Governance. And perhaps you would like to just show us uh, the award and tell us how you did that. What happened is that um, each year the, at the annual co uh, convention of the International Municipal Clerks, they uh, ask for submissions of projects that uh, someone in the city has done that made an, an, an impact on the community. What we submitted this year was the introduction of the red forms and the water affidavit online so that when we lost our uh, agent downtown in Chicago Loop, we had the one who could sell the stamps to the people who had property here in Evanston. So that went online. It saved us, the city, money and postage, and also saved the uh, lawyers down in Loop postage. Uh, and so from that, the presentations of those who presented, uh, Evanston wound up being the chosen winner for the year 2011. And I received this uh, while I was in Tennessee. So that's where I was uh, the first week in May. Great. This is for all of us. I also want to thank uh, Erica Storley, because if it wasn't for her ingenuity and in getting it on the website uh, so that we could um, inload the people's information on the web, online, download it, then mail it to us, along with the water affidavit and also Elaine Otwell, my deputy, who helped to uh, proofread everything. So between the three of us, this is what we wound up getting for the city. Great. And it's gorgeous. Congratulations. Well, was I supposed to sing that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, next city manager, public announcements. Yes, Suzette Robinson, our public works director, is here to give a plug on the uh, change to refuse schedules for the Memorial Day holiday. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, City Clerk Green. Um, Suzette Robinson, the director of public works, and in observance of Memorial Day, uh, May 30th, all trash collection will occur one day later that week, and the recycling collection for condominiums that occurs on Friday will move to Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. 
And also, Madam Mayor, just a reminder that uh, the Edmonton Public Library will be closed uh, on Sunday uh, and Monday of uh, this weekend for the, uh, for the holiday. And then finally, uh, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock in the Parasol Room, we will have an uh, informational meeting uh, regarding a proposed uh, tax on uh, bags here in Evanston. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, the issue uh, in, in broad terms, uh, taxes, bans on plastic bags, bans on paper bags, uh, all of the above. We would encourage folks to come. Uh, the format of the meeting will have a presentation by Catherine Hurley, our sustainable programs coordinator, who will give an overview uh, of the issue. There's also a white paper online uh, that mm -hmm. residents can uh, consult. Uh, we will then uh, have roundtable discussions uh, from uh, folks that are present to talk about the issue, have the, those tables or report out uh, their uh, discussions, and also if there are representatives from organizations present, we will also give the representatives of those organizations uh, an opportunity to make a statement. We'll bring all that information back uh, to the City Council uh, at a future meeting uh, to continue the discussion regarding uh, uh, bags in Evanston. Thank you. Uh, next, City Clerk, do you have communications? Uh, nothing at this time, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Next is citizen comment. Each citizen will have three minutes, and please do not go over that time limit. <coughs> the first four are Michael Miro, Betty Esther, Nancy DuPont, 615 Dempster, and Frank Jeffers. Jeffers. Good evening. Um, I'm Michael Miro. I am the Programs Director and Farmers Market Manager of Ridgeville Park District. And I forgot. I apologize. You need to say where you live. Oh, I'm sorry. 1410 Chicago Avenue. Thank you. Um, I've uh, come here tonight to ask you to consider waiving or significantly reducing the $225 health inspection fee that um, affects the vendors at our market. Um, as you know, we're a smaller market, uh, we're a midweek market. We generally try and have uh, between eight to 10 vendors um, a summer, and this fee would affect eight of our vendors. Um, it's quite possible that um, without this fee being adjusted, we will lose um, some, if not all, of our vendors, um, frankly, because it's not worth their time and energy. Um, they're, they're just not generating enough uh, revenue to justify coming. Uh, we have a couple of our vendors here in the audience, if you could just raise your hand. Um, and um, I recognize, you know, that this fee may be um, appropriate for some of the vendors, the vendors at the downtown market, but our market just simply doesn't generate enough traffic um, to justify the cost uh, for the vendors. Um, we think that the Farmer's Market is a tremendous asset to South Evanston. Um, we really try and make it a, a community event, um, a place where neighbors can come together and, and visit, where nonprofits can set up their booths and give out information, where local musicians can play, and it's really hard to create that sort of atmosphere if there's only two vendors at the market. Um, so. Um, we're asking for a little help in this regard, and um, I think there'll be some of our vendors who will be speaking tonight. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Betty Esther. I stay at 2031 Church Street. Uh, from a phone call from Madeline Dupree, who stays at 1929 uh, Foster Street, asked that for P2 ordinance 460-01 about the special use for the building and stuff at 1915 and 1919 gray, that you do not suspend the rule and let it be introduced tonight so uh, she could have a chance next at the next council meeting to speak on her own behalf with her own voice. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Frank Jeffress. I live at 613 Sheridan Road. Um, I serve as the vice chairman of the Friends of the Evanston Farmers Market, and I'm here just to observe the 
process of passing and be available to answer any questions if you have that at that time. Um, I want to thank Doug Gaynor and Zali Webb for their support of the, the markets and what they've done and their willingness to, willingness to work with us as friends and try to make them better, not only the downtown market, but the remaining four markets throughout Evanston. And in other hats, speaking as an individual, um, I just I want to um, hope that the full council recommends to the health department that they engage in a conversation with the t with citizens and businesses who are impacted by the fees that are charged by the health department um, to inspect the foods. Um, I, f I did some analysis in, of the Moran memorandum of uh, Director Thomas, and, and it's very difficult to understand the support for charging $225 for an inspection of a farmer. Um, the, the, the hours suggested that they spend in, the, the inspect, uh, spend in doing the inspection, I have not observed that those to be true or accurate. Um, nor that the time that they spend is always in time and a half, i.e. the Ridgeville market occurs on Wednesdays, which is the work days, and so that should be at straight time. So there's a lot of questions are raised as a support for the fees charged. And I understand that we're all under uh, pressure to collect money, but it, to have an open dialogue to understand why the certain fee, there, why the support for certain fees because the, we do find farmers and vendors not coming to markets because of the cost of health inspections. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, next, Virginia Mann, Padma Rao, Eve Doy, and <coughs> Junad Rizki. Virginia Mann, 3004 Normandy Place. Regarding item A, 3.7, I'd like to thank you for your ongoing support of the elm tree injection program. Your decision to inject all of our elm trees will help save tax dollars, reduce air pollution, protect our property values, and maintain the character of our community. Your support for this program is greatly appreciated. Over the past several years, I've addressed this council on numerous occasions about our trees. Although council members have not always agreed with my position, I've always been given the opportunity to share my perspective in what I hope has been a thoughtful and professional manner. In return, like everyone else who speaks here, I've been treated with consideration and respect, which I appreciate. Earlier this month, I joined my neighbors in making a presentation before the Evanston Plan Commission regarding the redevelopment of the, Evanston, of the Presbyterian Home property. The manner in which I was treated at the Plan Commission was completely contrary to how I have been treated before this body. I encourage each of you to watch the meeting as I don't believe any of you would be proud of how my neighbors and I were treated. My hope is that steps can be taken to assure that Evanston taxpayers receive fair, equitable, and respectful treatment, not only when they address this council, but when they speak to any committee of the city. After all, this is our city, and it would seem that we should receive the same consideration and respect that was afforded the paid consultants who were speaking on behalf of the Presbyterian Homes. Thank you very much. And I would like to share with you a copy of that presentation that we gave. My name is Padma Rao. I live at 2246 Sherman Avenue, and I'm speaking regarding the resubdivision of the Kendall Block this evening. My neighbors and I have stated concerns regarding this matter, specifically the plan to needlessly kill over two dozen mature trees and to pointlessly endanger the lives of young children and other pedestrians on Colfax Street. Our concerns are supported by authorities in law, science, ecology, zoning, tax considerations, and logic. This council has adamantly refused to answer any of our questions or to state any reason or basis for ignoring our concerns. One council member stated that the developer's plan is, quote, by right, end quote. 
but to this day refuses to point to any legal authority that confers any such alleged right. Instead, according to an article in the Evanston Patch, the same council member was overheard reassuring the developer's lawyer that the decision would be pushed through no matter what. The same council member used the April 12th call of the wards to engage in self-praise instead of providing a single citation to law or basis in fact for the decision. The city's lawyer never cited any legal basis for this council's decision. Instead, by treating the developer's lawyer like co-counsel and being inaccessible to the point of hostility towards the public, the city's lawyer created the appearance that the city and developer are co-parties in an adversarial action against the citizens. The city code, section 413.1, part B, states in pertinent part, no such resubdivision shall be approved by the city council unless it conforms with all the applicable ordinances of the city. One such applicable ordinance is the zoning ordinance, section 617.6 of which states, existing trees shall be preserved in place wherever possible. At section 612, the zoning ordinance includes among its purposes, promoting the public health and safety, securing pure air and safety from dangers, minimizing or lessening congestion in the public streets, and encouraging the preservation and enhancement of natural resources, historic resources, natural features, and aesthetic amenities. Therefore, I submit that tree protection and traffic safety are requirements of the zoning ordinance, compliance with which is mandated by the city code. The Illinois Municipal Code, part of state law, states in pertinent part at 65 ILCS 5 slash 1115 if any municipality has adopted a subdivision ordinance, all subdivision plats shall be submitted for approval and approved in the manner provided in such ordinance. So state law requires this council to abide by the provisions of the city code governing subdivisions, which in turn requires the council to deny any resubdivision that fails to comply with the provisions of the zoning ordinance regarding tree protection and traffic safety. State law goes further, adding in pertinent part at 65 ILCS 5 slash 11128, the person requesting the resubdivision shall file four copies of a plat thereof with the clerk of the municipality and shall furnish therewith four copies of all data necessary to show compliance with all applicable municipal regulations. So the developer was required to produce all data necessary to show compliance with the zoning ordinance, including its provisions regarding tree protection and traffic safety. However, there were no data provided regarding traffic safety or to support killing over two dozen trees. No scientific or ecological data were ever cited to show compliance with city ordinances Mr. or to support- Ail, I, your three minutes is up. It, it does say that in our rules that- Let I know, but it does say in our rules, time. it is written in our rules, I would be happy to read it, that no individual so, shall speak longer than three minutes. And I realize that uh, in the past we have allowed you six minutes, but as I said at the beginning, I would like to stick to our rules, which are that each speaker shall not speak for more than three minutes. Then my mom, may my mother speak? Yes, she may. Okay. I can read. <laughs> I'm reading. However, there were no data provided regarding traffic safety or to support killing of over two dozen trees. No scientific or ecological data were ever cited to show compliance with city ordinances or to support this council's decision. Where are the data? Illinois case law supports the position that I have stated in Brown versus City of Joliet, the court held that municipalities were authorized to pass ordinances imposing regulations upon applications for subdivision, and that such an application is properly denied if the applicant fails to show compliance with the regulations. The court further held that denial of a subdivision application is appropriate where the public health and welfare are at issue stating the only benefit to plaintiff is an economic gain from the sale of her lots uh, and possibly the avoidance of an economic loss thereon, whereas the public loss might well result in sewer water backing up 
in people's homes in the area. The public gain, therefore, in enforcing the ordinance could reasonably have been determined to outweigh plaintiff's loss. Brown versus City of Joliet, 108. Okay, here this council's decision results in the loss of over two dozen trees that have been part of our community and history. No data have been provided regarding the long-term ecological impact of such an act. This council's decision to allow a dangerous traffic configuration may well result in the loss of life and limb for some of my neighbors. What legitimate reasons could possibly support a decision with such dire and irreversible consequences? I respectfully demand that each and every council member clearly state the specific legal authorities that they relied upon in voting for this decision. I further respectfully demand that each and every council member produce the data that they relied upon to determine compliance with the traffic safety and the tree protection provisions of the zoning ordinance. This council's continued refusal to disclose any information in this regard raises the presumption that the information either does not exist or that it does not support this council's decision. The implication of this presumption is that each and every council member's vote for this plan is a breach of their fiduciary obligation to the city and the citizens. So prove up or fess up. Thank you, madam. Thank you. I told you I have bad accent. <laughs> you did very well. Good evening. My name is Eve Doyle. I'm with the Evanston Chamber at 1840 Oak Avenue on uh, Suite LM 110. I'm pretty new, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> Just wanted to introduce myself as the new executive director of the Evanston Chamber of Commerce um, and wanted to really extend um, kind of an olive branch and um, tell you all that I'm looking forward to working with you. Um, in the past, I'm not sure that the chamber and the city have um, worked as well together as maybe they could have, and I just want to be a resource to you. I'm offering um, our um, staff and our board to you as uh, resources and also partners in the process to make Evanston the best community it can be. And so if there's something I can do to help you, please um, don't hesitate to give me a call or stop by our office, and I'll look forward to talking to you later. Thank you. Thank you very much, and welcome to Evanston. I just have a few things to comment on, um, Jeanette Risky. The salt dome that the city talked about at the last meeting, I found it interesting tonight. We're going to purchase 7,000 tons, basically, of salt for about $56 a ton. Um, it appears to me the issue here isn't a building a big building, but really the purchasing practices of the city of Evanston to purchase the salt. And that's really an issue here. And I think the council needs to have staff go through all these purchasing practices and figure out what's going on here. And why do so buildings sometimes, if you don't have a program in place that makes any sense, why are you building a building? And the one thing I found disturbing again is we're doing work for Skokie again. Basically, we're doing work for another community in that building. And uh, here again, we don't, you know, is this beneficial to us as taxpayers? And just like the whole thing with the, the uh, roadkill issue, you know, we're doing work for other communities. Are we really give, do, subsidizing other communities? And the other thing I heard tonight on Gray Avenue, and I don't live anywhere near Gray Avenue. But you know, staff it, here again appears dropped the ball with notifying these neighbors. But what really disturbed me looking at, and I'm a, obviously some of you know I'm an architect, looking at what I saw up there, I couldn't make heads or tails of how the properties around that property were being impacted. And frankly, it's, it's, if the city was involved in this with city stick, you know, city symbols on these drawings and things, the city has a responsibility to protect these neighbors. Um, you know, frankly, if this was in a historic neighborhood. I think that you know, this is basically a different area of town. People would be up, up in arms a little bit more about the impacts on people's property surrounding this. Um, and my last item, um, given the budgetary issues here, the city continues to send out some pretty mix, interesting mixed messages. We're going to borrow $4 million from a sewer fund, but we're gonna, we, we need to operate with, we need to basically take money out of the operating fund to fund capital. Now. You know, just to get a point of reference, how many employees does that mean you lay off to take $2 million this year and then another $2 million next year to do this? Because the money's not there, so I, I don't really understand it. 
borrowing makes sense. If we have some big problem here, then we need to discuss this problem why we can't borrow. And uh, I just don't understand that. The other thing is there seems to be a continued hiring of new employees here. And I mean, we got a message that we might not even be able to fund, you cut firefighters, for instance. Well, why aren't we just hiring contract firefighters or, but other city employees too? Why did we hire all these, con why did we hire all these people for 311 as full-time employees and not fill this with contractors mostly if we're going to be laying all these people off? To me, these are really mixed messages you're sending the taxpayers, but you're also sending these mixed messages to employees here. And I think um, someone suggested that, that the other night that employees are angry because they're not appreciated. Well, I think employees are getting some pretty mixed messages here that may make them angry. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes public comment, I believe. Uh, Alderman Rainey, could we have the consent agenda? Thank you, Madam Mayor. First item on the consent agenda is approval of the minutes of the regular council meeting of May 9. Um, Administration and Public Works Committee requests your approval of the payroll through May 8, $2,488,528.91. And the bills uh, for FY 2011 through May 24 in the amount of $2,979,024.98. The committee also recommends a contract award to Central Parking System to manage and operate the Sherman Plaza, Maple Avenue, and Church Street parking facilities. The term is for um, an initial two-year and eight-month period beginning May 1, 2011, terminating uh, December 31, 2013, with two optional one-year renewals for a not-to-exceed cost of $1,007,099 for the first eight months of the contract, $1,511,299 for year two, and $1,545,977 <coughs> for year three. Funding is provided by the parking fund. We ask your approval of a two-year contract for meter transmission units for water for water two water resources in the amount of $58,000. Um, just so others know, these units transmit water usage uh, to your water usage to the water department. Next, we ask your approval uh, of a one-month extension to the city's current electrical supply agreement with Mid-America Energy Company. Um, this is so that we can um, affect a second agreement, which is on your table tonight. It is a new long-term agreement for um, energy usage, and this agreement is with Exelon Energy Company to provide electrical energy to 23 city-owned facilities beginning July 1, 2011, staff recommends that this agreement be based on the 25% renewable energy for the 36-month period. You'll see the tables on um, the information for a price of 0 0.04931 cents per kilowatt hour. I'm going to leave this on the consent agenda unless anybody has an objection. So it's two parts. One is the one month extension with our current provider, and the second is the long term extension with, or the long term contract with Exelon Energy. Next is approval of, award, of an award of design services for the service center locker room renovation project to Beals and Beals, an Evanston uh, business at a total cost of $40,200. This is um, through the capital improvement pl program with a total allocation of $37,500. Um, approval is also requested for a sole source purchase of Andover brand building automation system controls from Schneider Electric. Uh, for the BAS upgrade project at the Evanston Civic Center in the amount of $97,000. We also ask your approval of the abatement and disposal of asbestos-containing material uh, at the Civic Center to NES in the amount of $44,000.
Also requested is your approval of a contract in the amount of $697,305 to Nels Johnson Tree Expert for the 2011 Dutch Elm Disease Control Program. Funding for this is from the general fund in the amount of $216,400 and reserve funds from previous years in the amount of $513,216. We ask your approval for the malt, uh, Morton Salt Purchase. Um, the contract is for 7,000 tons of rock salt for a, the winter season total of $419,490. Funding uh, is from the Snow and Ice Control Fund and will be split between 2011, the rate of 200,000 and 2012 at 219,490 dollars. The committee uh, recommends your approval of the city and for the city manager to sign a one-year lease agreement with Chicago Harley Davidson in the amount of $23,940 for the period of June 1 to J June 1 2011 to June 1 2012 for seven leased Harley Davidson motorcycles. We also ask your approval for a contract for the parking deck renovation design engineering services to Carl Walker to Carl Walker Inc. to facilitate the emergency repair of the Evanston Municipal Service Center building D parking deck. Funding for the work is from the CIP Fund Service Center Parking Deck Repairs in the amount of $44,300. Um, the, the total amount for the work, which is yet to be um, bid out, is $150,000 to $200,000. The committee recommends your approval of the single source purchase of library automation services from the Cooperative Computer services of Arlington Heights in the amount of $82,613.74. Believe it or not, this is a 1.7 decrease over last year on an annualized basis. The City Council approved an intergovernmental agreement with Cooperative Computer Services for the provision of library automation services in 2005. Administration of Public Works also recommends your approval of Resolution 32R10, which authorizes the manager to enter into a five-year lease, allowing continued use of City Parking Lot 38, located at 1016 Grove Street. The lease will be with the YMCA, located at 1000 Grove Street. We also request your approval of Resolution 28R11, authorizing a new one-year lease term for the first floor office space for the League of Women Voters of Evanston from June 1 to May 31, 2012, with a rent increase of 3% from $208 a month to $214 a month. This is for action. Uh, the next item, um, I'm wondering, should be off the consent or should we leave it on? I don't know if you want to exclaim about it. Should I'll read it. Um, next item is Resolution 33R11. This authorizes uh, approval, this requests your approval of resolution, this resolution, which authorizes the manager to sign the resolution of authorization for the open space lands acquisition and development grant application through the Illinois Department of Natural <coughs> Resources for the Centennial Park Lagoon Renovation Project. This is a program operates on a reimbursement basis providing up to 50% assistance for approved project costs. This is the important part. A private donor has offered a half a million dollar donation in support of this project. The OSLAD grant application will request a maximum grant award of 400,000, a commitment of 100,000 in capital improvement program funding through the pending uh, fiscal year 2012 budget will also be required. This is for action. A7 is for introduction and this authorizes the, um, this is requesting approval of the introduction of ordinance 28011 which authorizes the city to borrow funds from the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency Water uh, Pollution Control Loan Program. 
Loan funds will be used for the construction of the large diameter sewer rehab phase one project. This ordinance authorizes the city to borrow up to $4 million. The debt service will be paid from the sewer fund. For introduction is um, ordinance 47011. Um, we ask your consideration of the adoption of 47011, which provisionally amending the following titles to the Evanston City Code. Number one, Title I, General Administration. Number two, Title II, Boards and Commission. And three, Title XI, Administrative Adjudication. As I said, it's for introduction. For action tonight, um, we recommend your approval of Ordinance 32011, which includes the reduced sale price of $770,085 for the city property in the 700 block of Chicago Avenue due to current market conditions and the substantial change in property valuation. Uh, construction is expected in 2011, subject to final uh, private funding approval. This ordinance was introduced at the May 9 Council meeting. Under planning and development for introduction, um, the Zoning Board of Appeals recommends the adoption of Ordinance 39011, which grants a special use permit for the operation of a resale establishment with certain conditions at 1610 Maple. I'm introducing this and the Chairman of the committee um, will discuss the amendments made and move uh, to suspend the rules this evening. Um, Ordinance 4601, 46001, grants a special use permit for the planned development proposed at 1915 through 1919 Gray Avenue. The plan commission and the city staff recommend the adoption of 460. Uh, 01 granting a special use permit for the planned development at uh, 1915 1919. Um, this is a revitalization program six units of affordable housing, four units of new construction, and two rehabilitated units in part uh, as part of the neighborhood stabilization uh, program number two. The applicant requests, and this is why it's a special use, the applicant requests to exceed uh, development allowances to build a four-unit multi-family structure on the property and to allow the new residential building to stand nine feet, four and a half inches from the existing residential structure. This is for introduction tonight. Also for introduction tonight um, and at the next meeting, we'll discuss the um, amendments to it or, and corrections. Um, this is uh, Ordinance 53011. Uh, staff recommends the passage of Ordinance 53011, which amends various portions of the Green Building Ordinance, Title V, Chapter 24 um, of the City Code of the City of Evanston, 1979. The amendment provides for an appendix to address Evanston sustainable building measures for new construction, which is part of an option for compliance with the city's goal of green building design for buildings 10,000 square feet to 20,000 square feet. Um, under Human Services, uh, Ordinance 34011, staff recommends approval Take as, I'm sorry, time. yes ma'am. Um, Ordinance 34011, the Farmer's Market Ordinance Amendment is off the consent agenda. Under other committees, uh, the, uh, the Rules Committee, um, th there's a two-part resolution here. The first part is, um, I'm not sure how to read this. Um, the first part is City Council Rule 1615 currently states the City Council meeting shall be held semi-monthly or twice a month. Um, on May 2, the Rules Committee met and considered an amendment to the Evanston uh, City Code and the Council Rule noted above. The Rules Committee recommends that the City Council meetings be held three times a month. Um, because of that resolution, we then must amend the city code. And the Rules Committee then recommends for introduction the adoption of agenda item, uh, which is number two, ordinance 36011. Um, the code currently states the council meeting shall be held semi-monthly or twice a month, respectively. 
Um, as I mentioned, the Rules Committee met and um, has determined that the council meeting shall be held three times a month, and therefore the code needs to be corrected. Then finally, and believe me, not least, is the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation uh, Report for 2009-2010. This reflects all of the work done by the Community Development Block Grant Committee and staff. The Housing and Community Development Act Committee and staff recommend approval of the City's Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report, commonly known as the CAPER. Regarding the City's Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, Home Investment Partnership, Home and Emergency Shelter Grant, ESG, programs for 2010-11, the CAPER must be submitted to the Chicago Field Office for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development by May 3, 2010. This reflects all of the money expended and awarded um, over the last year, and I would really encourage you all to read it, and I know I'm sort of taking off here on the side, but um, Sarah Flax and the staff and the Community Development Block Grant Committee did amazing work on this. Um, then, for appointments, the Firefighters Pension Board, the mayor's recommending the approval of Joe Romano for the uh, Minority Women and Evanston Business Enterprise Commi Development Committee, Shoshona Baranda, and the West Oakton Development Committee, Alan Spears, recommended for appointment. With that, Madam Mayor, I conclude the consent agenda and move its approval. Second. Thank you, Alderman Rainey. It's been moved and seconded. City Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Burris? Aye. Alderman Fisk? Aye. Alderman Braithwaite? Aye. Alderman Wynn? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Holmes? Aye. Alderman Tindum? Aye. Alderman Grover? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Nine to zero. Nine to zero. The consent agenda passes. Um, Alderman Holmes, Administration and Public Works. No report, Madam Mayor. All right. Um, planning and Development, Alderman Wilson. Thank you. With regard to P1 Ordinance 39011, granting special use for a resale establishment at 1610 Maple Street, this was amended to permit the business owner to allow people dropping off goods at the front of the store for things that are clothing, soft goods, things of that nature. The original materials had indicated that all deliveries otherwise would have had to be in the uh, through the back entrance at the alley. So that was the amendment that was uh, incorporated by the committee. And I would also move to suspend the rules to allow us to take action tonight so that the business owner can get her business up and running hopefully this weekend. All right, so would you like to first suspend the rules? I'd like to suspend the rules, right. thank you. Um, seeing no lights for further discussion, City Clerk, would you call the roll to suspend the rules, guys? Alderman Burris? Aye. Alderman Fisk? Aye. Alderman Braithwaite? Aye. Alderman Wynn? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Holmes? Aye. Alderman Tindum? Aye. Alderman Grover? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Nine zero. Nine to zero, the rules are suspended. And I would therefore like to move to adopt the ordinance as amended. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the ordinance as amended. City Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Burris? Aye. Alderman Fisk? Aye. Alderman Braithwaite? Aye. Alderman Wynn? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Holmes? Aye. Alderman Tindum? Aye. Alderman Grover? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Nine to zero. Nine to zero, the motion passes. Does that conclude your report? That concludes my report, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Tendum. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move approval of Ordinance 34011, Farmer's Market Ordinance Amendments. Staff recommends approval of Ordinance 34011, Amending Chapter 25, Farmer's Market of the Title III Business Regulations of the Evanston City Code related to the regulation of farmer's markets. The Human Services Committee reviewed and approved the changes to the ordinance on Monday, May 2nd, 2011. This ordinance was introduced at the May 9th, 2011 City Council, at which time information was requested from the, from the Health Department regarding food sanitation guidelines. Second. Do we have... The uh, report from the, uh, was that given at the last, I don't know that we do. 
Madam Mayor, Alderman Tenna, members of the council. Uh, we have additional communications that's attached to the item. Uh, we would ask that the council consider the ordinance um, and then we would be happy to move on to the discussion regarding the fees if that would please the council. Alderman Burris. This is mostly regarding the fees, but um, I hopefully you received emails from uh, Ridgeville commissioners. I think you received at least uh, communication from two of the Ridgeville commissioners, um, from the Ridgeville staff, from Ridgeville uh, vendors as well about their concern. Um, this is going to kill the Ridgeville farmer's market if you go down this path. Um, it may not matter to the most of Evanston, but it does matter to South Evanston. As you heard tonight from the staff, it's not just about um, a farmer's market, it, we want our produce, fresh produce, but it's about community. It's a place for people to gather. It's a place for people to, to get to know each other. Um, by doing this, I think that it's a serious problem. I also have a serious problem with the, the fee structure that was outlined. Um, I find it completely suspect, honestly. Um, outrageous. I think the public should be crying foul. Um, and I would love to hear from the vendors that they really believe that the, this breakdown, that the inspectors are honestly spending this much time with each of the vendors. I want to see effort reporting from each of the health inspectors. If we really are saying that the health inspector is spending one hour looking at the application, another hour interviewing the vendor on the application, then we have six, my computer's gone down, we have six hours that they're spending throughout the, the season, one hour inspection six times throughout the season, and then we're paying them time and a half and sometimes double time. We wonder why we're in a budget crisis. This is why we're in a budget crisis because we can't manage properly. This is ridiculous this is happening, and we're trying to put vendors out of business. I got a call from another vendor that's trying to get into our downtown market. We're making it as difficult as possible to let her into our downtown market. We have to do something to help these folks. Thank you, Alderman Wilson. Well, I think we're talking about two different things, though. The ordinance doesn't set the fees. The ordinance is just the ordinance, and I think that's the only thing that's before us right now. So. I don't see any reason not to proceed with the ordinance and then of course the city staff is responsible for setting the fees and presumably hopefully with our input and direction but this isn't setting the fees this is simply uh, establishing the ordinance and the fees are independent of what we're being asked to do tonight alderman tandem uh, i completely agree with both uh, alderman wilson and alderman burris the um we should go ahead with a vote on this uh, ordinance and then um, turn it over to a much further discussion about fees, particularly with regard to Ridgeville. And I think Alderman Burris is, is exactly correct that there's just something uh, terribly gone wrong in this fee structure. Alderman Holmes. I certainly agree that we should go ahead with the ordinance. But I, I think that we need a better, well, not a better, I think we need a complete um, explanation of what um, vendors are actually inspected by the health department. All vendors, because when you say vendors, it sounds like we're talking about all the vendors, and we're not, I, from my experience. I think that we need to understand which vendors this affects and the health implications of that. I think that would be helpful maybe to the, some of the council members who are not at the Human Services Committee and may not have heard uh, a more in-depth um, explanation of, of why there are uh, fees for, I'm not talking about the amount of the fees, but why there are fees for health inspections and the type of vendors that need health inspections. Because there's a real difference in terms of uh, regular vendors. I mean, you can have lots of vendors that would never need a health inspection. So I, and I think we need to understand, everyone needs to understand that. Thank you. Alderman Grover. Uh, pass in favor of a vote on the ordinance in front of us. Uh, seeing no further lights, it's been moved and seconded that we pass the farmer's market ordinance amendments. Uh, city clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman, <coughs> Alderman Burris. Aye. Alderman Fisk. Aye. Alderman Braithwaite. Aye. Alderman Wynn. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. 
Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tindum. Aye. Alderman Grover. Aye. Alderman Rainey. I only if we discuss the fees later. So I uh, would a with a concession. It's an I if. When right. <laughs> eight. Okay, that's uh, seven. Eight-ish to one. Eight-ish, eight-ish to one. Eight-ish to one. I'm serious, so I'm serious. Yeah. We know you are. Uh, the motion of the ordinance passes. Madam Mayor. Uh, so, yes, City Manager. Uh, if it would please the council, then at this point we would like to talk about the uh, the fees. There's additional information in your packet of Anna Thomas, the health director is here. If she could uh, uh, come to the podium and give an overview of the fees. Uh, I also think it's important, as at least one alderman indicated, to, to make a distinction of uh, who is charged health inspections fees and who's not charged health inspection fees. Uh, Carl Kniever, our environmental health manager, is also here. Um, so I think they'll, looks like they'll tag team this. Good evening, City Manager, Madam Mayor, City Council, City Clerk. I'm Ivana Thomas, Health Director, and we did uh, provide additional information in your packet as it relates to um, health inspection fees when they're seasonal fees, temporary food events. Um, at this time, Carl and I can entertain your specific questions if we haven't addressed them already. Um, Ms. Thomas, uh, Mr. Keneva, uh, I, I think it's important, and perhaps we can, we can ask uh, the Council uh, to look specifically at the uh, the page that you have, and um, I don't have it immediately in front of me. Do you have the the, the page in the packet? 412. 412, 411, 412. Um, Ivana, if you could talk about um, uh, the breakdown of the fee that you have here, um, I think specifically on page 413, uh, the farmer's market fees, The if you could walk through what constitutes the costs associated with the with the farmer market fee, and if you could maybe talk a little bit about uh, the vendors um, that are required to have it versus vendors that uh, participate in farmer's market who do not, are not required. Sure. Um, because I don't have the page number, I think it's the same memo where the activity application review interview of applicant, is that it? That's correct. Okay. That's a specific area I'm going to um, ask Carl to speak to that about uh, what actually takes place during that review. Um, and again, um, we the the number that you're looking at six inspections is an, on average um, it's not every vendor receives six inspections some of them are required uh, that we come out and repeat um, an inspection and that's through the six month process that's not um, again that's uh, it, it can vary from whether the vendor is providing um, cut or uh, uncut foods or fruits and vegetables, et cetera. So I'm going to ask Carl to come and speak specifically to each item, what actually walk you through a review process that would take that hour per inspector. So to, to address, the, I think, first of all, the, the issue of who's getting these licenses and who's not, uh, really we're looking at the difference between uh, fresh, whole, uncut uh, produce and fruits. Uh, so if they if they abide by that, the farmers markets uh, vendors abide by that and don't do anything different from that, they're exempt from any fees or any inspections or anything like that. If they do anything different, um, and uh, for example, if they're uh, doing any kind of cutting of, uh, of foods, if they're doing any kind of uh, baked goods or things like that, they fall under this or they fall under the ordinance, which is directed by the Illinois Department of Public Health, and gives us guidelines as to how to approach that. In regards to our uh, review of the, individual ins of the individual vendors, we typically get an application from them that lists their food, lists their source. Our Excuse me, Carl. Alderman Wynn, did you want to ask a question now? I'm, I'm sorry, Carl. But so when, when I go through the farmer's market and some of the fruit and vegetable vendors will slice up like a peach or an apple for you and let you taste it, is that someone who would then be inspected or not? Typically, that's not inspected. That's that's something that is fresh at the time, and so they may be doing sampling. Um, that's something that's beyond what we're doing on site. And so the typical person who applies to us has a product that they've processed over time and have done either they're they're you know they're they're, they're doing a, a full process of. Um, so, but they're cutting and slicing, and that's what one of the things that you said is is one of those prerequisites. So. 
So you're saying someone who just is offering you a slice of apple is not <coughs> is not someone who's inspected. Uh, tip, well, if, if if they're offering, I mean, if they're slicing something, that I mean, that that applies to doing something different than offering whole uncut. Right. No, they're slicing apples oh, and sorry. peaches. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. If we know about it, and if we know about it beforehand while we're out there, yes, they would be. They would come under this ordinance. I've, okay. And, and specifically, Mr. Keneva, yes. uh, the slicing would be if they would plant, let's say, if, sell a bowl of sliced fruit. Um, that was what it would be, it would be under. And I, and I think it has been the city's practice that if the vendor only is selling fresh fruit or vegetables and they do not require the health permit, um, that this example that Alderman Wins is giving is more of a gray area. It is really. They're not, it, selling, the they're not selling it. They're it would just be offering it as a taste. If for some reason they were to slice up uh, fruits and berries, let's say, and have that available for purchase, then they would be required. And, and, and Mr. Keneva, can you tell us how many vendors currently hold who, who sell at farmers markets? How many have a, this license that we're talking about this evening? Currently, there are seven. So there are seven individuals. So you think of all the various vendors you see at all the farmers markets citywide, and there are currently seven. Uh, that are subject to this, and I believe there are 11 total citywide. There, yes, there are. So there, there are an additional four vendors uh, that are subject to this citywide for other events and, 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 and circumstances. So there's only seven vendors uh, currently at the farmer's market that are subject to these That's correct. requirements. Alderman Rainey. How about, I, that was the question I was going to ask, what about at the Ridgeville farmer's market? Is it, it can't be seven there. I, I don't know how many vendors Ridgeville has. Typically, they have somewhere around 10. And so it would, again, depend. I, I don't know. I know, I know. Uh, but do you know how many you give the full-blown inspection to? Who are? It, we don't have the applications from Ridgeville this year, so I don't know how many have applied to do those types of activities. And you can't remember from last I mean, was it like all of them, half of them, a few of them? It's, it, anybody, Michael, from um, Ridgeville, can anybody here? Tell us how many would be subjected to that. And what were they selling? We, we want to know what were they doing. Let's, let's get everybody understanding this on the same, at the same time. Who was the vendor? What were they selling? Um, last year we had um, a couple of baked goods, uh, baked good vendors. We had a bread seller and a, a cookie. Uh, seller uh, who's here tonight um, and then we also had someone doing a uh, pomegranate tapenade um, yeah, that's which was sure which was great and then coffee it affects coffee as well so that was down coffee or serving coffee uh, both I believe it they were selling it by the glass and by the the whole beans so um, so Where did they get the beans? They're not, yeah. Those aren't grown locally. No, those aren't grown locally, but it it it, it, it fell under the. Uh, it was one of the items on the uh, application that they had to get the extra two hundred twenty-five dollar permit for. And the the. Um, it will also affect eggs. I'm sorry, eggs is another vendor, and we had a meat vendor. It would also affect them. Oh yeah, yeah. That, and that Mr. Keneva, if the vendor is vending at other markets, they, it's one permit for all or one permit for each market they vend at? It's one permit for this season. So if, if tags is, so if tags is at multiple farmers markets, they have one permit for all the farmers markets That's they attend. Good. I like Correct. that. As long as they're preparing the food the same way and we know about that, yes. They, can, can you explain the difference though between the tags and somebody who just may be making bread and selling it there? I, I'm not sure we understand your question. I, I, well, Tags is a bakery that has a site, right? So you want us to explain the difference between an established, like brick and mortar, and right, someone baking absolutely. out of their home? Yes. That's the question. Right. And why it would require? Right. Brick and mortar, obviously, have a food establishment license, and so they're... Um, Already covered. What's that? They're already covered, correctly. They're not. They're not covered. This is seen as an extra, um, and it's an extra fee because this is an extra part of their business. So you, you're telling me that the bakeries in Evanston, who come to the downtown market, have to pay an extra fee at this to time. Set? Yes. Oh, okay. Alderman Burris. Okay, I, I actually think there may be that. 
I believe if a vendor is at Ridgeville and pays the 225 for their cookies and they sell at Custer Street, you charge them again. It was a, a, as for our fees, those are two different fees. So the seasonal fee is six months. And for anybody to operate at a temporary food festival, which is Custer Street, Lakeshore Arts, Ethnic Arts, that's a, a temporary food event fee. So, these so are, even though they're operating the exact same way, so similar to if they were, so if they were operating at Ridgeville and at the downtown market, it would only be one fee. But if they're operating at Ridgeville and a two-day event, you're double charging them. We're charging the, for for the two separate activities. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm once again, you're, so you're double charging them, so they could be. They could be at sorry. They could be at three different farmers markets, and you would charge them two twenty-five. Correct. But if they're at a farmers market, and only a two-day event, you're going to charge them again for the exact same inspection. The, the, How is that possibly rational? A, okay. Just uh, just bear with me here, and then. Breaking down the fees again, you're charging $225 for a coffee vendor. How could you possibly spend an hour six times throughout the season inspecting the coffee vendor? I'm not sure what you could do for an hour inspecting the coffee vendor or the cookie lady who has already made the cookies somewhere else at, an, at a facility that has been inspected and has a health inspection. Her cookies are all put together in bags or whatever she sells them in so she's displaying basically selling them what could an inspector do once again for an hour six times throughout the season that is that's just I mean crazy to me that we are trying to tell people that we honestly are doing that much work for the $225 that seems wrong. Alderman Burst, could you let Mr. Keneva answer, please? And, and perhaps I'll, I'll try to take it from Mr. Keneva, because I think it's a larger public uh, policy question. Um, the laws that uh, Mr. Keneva and Ms. Uh, Thomas are referring to uh, have been on the books for some time. And they represent uh, the regulation of activity that occurred here in Evanston at the time they were created. Uh, so uh, they probably date back to one farmer's market and uh, two summer festivals. And so what has happened in Evanston over time is that that has evolved. We now have at least five farmers markets operating on a weekly basis, uh, multiple additional festivals. Um, we have had uh, the growth of vendors at these festivals. Uh, the city council has just approved language that has broadened the definition of baked goods. Uh, so beginning this evening, that definition has been broadened to allow, but based on this council's request, additional vendors to participate who have baked goods. So clearly the, the laws have evolved. This is not uh, because the staff is looking to make additional money. This is not uh, because uh, there is mismanagement. It is because the laws uh, have evolved and the use has evolved. Uh, we are here this evening to present to you what the current laws are, and I will say as your city manager, I think there are opportunities uh, to make adjustments. So the question I believe here before us this evening is what do we do uh, now that we have entered the spring and summertime uh, when we have the bulk of these uses? Um, can we make those adjustments here tonight, or do we need to come back to you with a comprehensive look uh, that says here are food vendors in Evanston that may vend at various events throughout the year, may they be special events, May they be multiple farmers markets? Uh, are they local businesses? Do they have bricks and mortar here? Do they not? Are they based here? Um, how do we want to measure that? Uh, and I do not believe, Alderman Burris, members of the City Council, that our current pro code provisions really provide the flexibility uh, that the reality of these events do uh, need. I will also say that it's very important for our health department to provide appropriate inspections. And I think uh, we basically have two flavors of appropriate inspection now, and I believe the current uses uh, really demand additional flavors. So what we would like to suggest this evening, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, is to address the fee issue.
issue first, because I think that's the most uh, direct way uh, to uh, address this um, and make adjustments for the current uh, summer with the fee schedule. Many have already paid these fees. We would propose if there's an adjustment that those fees be refunded. I believe most all the vendors, Mr. Gainers, at the downtown market have already paid those fees. Yeah. Um, we would, if there's an adjustment, we would encourage the adjustment to be made for all vendors citywide. Um, regardless of where they are located, we would make that adjustment and then come back to you as part of the budget process for fiscal 2012 uh, with a new scheme uh, addressing this flexibility. But again, I think it's very important to stress uh, that we're dealing with uh, uh, provisions and regulations uh, that were adopted at a different time and place. Only tonight has the City Council allowed the, the bakers, the many of who are here uh, concerned, to lawfully operate at farmer's markets. You've now amended the code to allow that to happen. Uh, so naturally, your fee basis needs to be as flexible as well. So um, Madam Mayor, I would you know, encourage certainly the council for additional discussion, but at an appropriate point, I'd like to make a suggestion um, as to how the fees could be adjusted in the current year um, so that we may be able to move forward. You, want to, uh, you are on the list, Alderman Wynn. Alderman Rainey. Um, yeah. I, I absolutely think we should have inspections and have absolutely no issue with that. I do have an issue, like you say, with type A and type B and type C and type D or level A, B, C, and D. The meat guy, he needs to be inspected or she needs to be inspected. Um, I'm not sure how you inspect the person who brings a wrap cookie. So. Those kinds of things. I mean, unless you're going into the kitchen and see how that cookie's prepared, um, I'm, I'm not sure uh, other than affidavits from the person doing it. But but we've, we've had bread for years at the farmer's market. I remember years ago allowing bakeries to come in. So this isn't the first year we've had bread. But, but, but Alderman, Rainey, Alderman Rainey, members of the council, uh, you have just broadened the definition of baked goods. Well, okay. Uh, this evening. Yeah. That, that definition has been very narrow uh, as far as bread only. Uh, the reality is um, that local bakeries have been selling things beyond bread because their patrons and our residents have wanted them to, right. and so we have done that. But however, as we've had smaller baked good vendors come to us, we've had to grapple with uh, that problem in the code. And so you have just now passed a, a measure <laughs> that broadens that because the reality is people have been selling, those who have been licensed to sell only bread have been selling many things in addition to bread. Right. Uh, now we've leveled that playing field. All right. So we, but I mean, we, we've had baked goods. We've expanded. That only makes sense. So I I mean, I'm happy with what you're willing to do. Take a look at the whole system. I, I don't think w anybody is saying, including Alderman Burris, not to inspect. I mean, we, we want our farmers markets to be providing safe foods. I do think that, I think the template that you've given us for inspection costs, regardless of what people are selling, um, seems, very, very over the top, and I, I hope you can reach some kind of um, compromise on these. And, and you know, I, I can't imagine why it wouldn't be, you know, foods that have to be cooked, foods that have to be refrigerated, food, you know, the way they're presented. And Alderman Rainey, members of the council, I think as many things in the city of Evanston over the last couple of years, uh, they have evolved. This council has asked us to look at making changes, and we've come back to you with changes. I think it's very appropriate um, at this point that we make similar uh, provisions here. Uh, we also need to be mindful of the actual costs. And so I think there's a balance uh, between all of that. Um, and again, as we've made adjustments in other parts of the municipal government, uh, I think perhaps we're at the point where we need to make adjustments here uh, to protect the uh, public safety regarding uh, the, the health issues are concerned, be reasonable in recovering our costs because that has also been a, a key component here, uh, and also make sure that we are not a detriment to uh, these markets that clearly provide important economic development activity throughout the community. Would you, would you restate one more time for the community and for us exactly how you're going to go about making or at least reviewing the current situation and making changes. Certainly. My, my suggestion would be to uh, cut by 50 percent 
uh, the fees that are being charged for this current year, uh, that we would provide refunds to those that have already paid uh, the cost and that any additional uh, fee would be half of the, uh, the current fee. So we're looking at the 200 and, I'm sorry, I went to the wrong page here. 225. The 225. So, so, let, so let's call it uh, 110 uh, for rounding purposes. So we would have $110 instead of 225. Um, we would uh, have the health department continue uh, making the, the same application review, interview of applicant licensing inspection, um, but would encourage them to be flexible in the actual expenditure of dollars because there really is an actual expenditure of dollars here. Um, we would take, I would propose that we take uh, any lost revenue, and my understanding from some work that was done by our finance department uh, this afternoon that uh, the total dollar amount for these fees is about $5,000. Uh, for the course of the year. So we're looking at potentially a $2,500 uh, deficit. Uh, we would look as we progress through the, the year and would ask the council to allow us to use economic development dollars uh, for whatever that actual uh, revenue shortfall is. So it would be around $2,500 in order to make the budget whole. We would then come back to you with the fiscal 2012 budget as we look at the health department's budget um, and uh, rework the fee structure and also come back to you with what we believe the revenue implications would be. Um, one piece of this that I don't know we've had a chance to talk about is what these inspectors do uh, through a seven-day week. Um, and it's a matter of uh, managing that time by not hiring more inspectors. We could flex time if we had more inspectors. However, uh, and maybe Mr. Keneva could talk just briefly about the other duties and assignments and the number of inspectors we're talking about. This is not a large number sure. of, of, of staff members we're talking about. City Manager, I can address that. We have three full-time sanitarians, and throughout the work week, they are looking at about 380 food establishments doing annual inspections and sometimes biannual and responding to uh, complaints as well as it relates to those establishments. So they may be out three to four times to one establishment doing an inspection. Uh, we do about uh, 30, uh, about 28, I'm sorry, daycare, uh, home daycare providers where they're providing inspections as well. Also, we do uh, lead assessment and risk assessments to those um, homes that have re been reported to us by the state as having children that have ex experienced lead poisoning. We also do uh, pest control and rodent management, um, air quality risk, uh, reports and complaints, and um, smoking complaints. So during a work week, our three inspectors uh, spend uh, 37.5 hours of their day responding to uh, annual inspections that are required by um, legislature or responding to those complaints as well. Thank and you. so, again, the uh, farmer's market inspections tend to fall on evening and weekend hours as they do operate throughout the summer months, and that uh, requires the additional day for the three full-time inspectors. Thank you. Um, Alderman Wynn. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, well, I was going to say something a little bit more earlier, but now the city manager has, has altered that somewhat. Um, I categorically disagree with you in just having this uh, and deciding to just cut these fees in half. I mean, I would really want to see an analysis of this. Um, I go to the farmer's market probably every other week, usually sometimes every week, and I buy with confidence from every one of those vendors uh, knowing that they have, they have, the food has been inspected. I buy and eat from many of those sources of the, that food, and I want to continue to be able to do that. Not that we would not be able to do that, but I've lived in another country for three years where it would be unthinkable to eat something off the street or from a market without coming home and washing it in chlorine. Unthinkable. And uh, you'd be hospitalized. So, I mean, I, I, we really depend on that. And Alderman Braithwaite has just done an analysis of this. This is $12 a week for these vendors. $12.23. $12.23 for these vendors. That's cheap. And, and Alderman Wynn. And, and well, let me finish. <coughs> and you know, do you know how fast our economic development, delightful economic development bubble of our farmer's market would burst if we had an outbreak of salmonella mm -hmm. at that farmer's market? Pretty fast. This is cheap. These inspectors work really hard. I will not support cutting this fee in half. I will not. You know, and no, no, maybe inspecting cookies 
is not worth that much time. But inspecting someone who's got meat or poultry or cheese and they're cooking it, sure, that takes that amount of time. Maybe we need some minor alteration in this. But I'll, you know, I'll bet there's a way to get sick serving coffee. I'm sure there is. Okay, so I and I really disagree with that. I really, really disagree with that. So grand total, we have 11 vendors in this city, and we're going to cut these things in half. I, I that is that is silly to me, just silly. And if we are having to dip into the economic development fund because we can't make because we're clearly creating a hole in the health department budget, then this is a mistake. We need to rethink this, perhaps with a with a, a, a different price license, but no, I, I, not for things that are going to make people wander through our market so happy without ever once thinking that they should not bite into something or take a taste or, walk, or hand it to their two-year-old in their stroller. You know, try living in some place where it is absolutely unthinkable to eat something off the street, no matter how delicious it looks. And then you'll realize how wonderful our farmer's market is. Thank you. Alderman Fisk? And, and may I just make a quick clarification that I'm not proposing any change in the inspections? None. Right, right. but you're, you're in proposing the something that's going to put, put a hole in our health, health department budget, so it actually is it's taking away something that actually we are doing that's valuable. And, and I'm not asking, the, again, that there would be no change in the inspection. That no, the amount I recognize of inspection that, but, but what, no, I recognize nothing will change in the inspections, but we're undercutting ourselves. This is something we are getting real value for, and we're charging the appropriate amount for the value. And we are one of the few communities in Illinois that charge the appropriate amount for the value. Well, then we, that is not a reason for us not to continue to be doing the right thing. I believe Wilmette charges $25 annually. Well, Wilmette can afford to do so that. So I'm just, again, I'm just trying to, from a balance, from an economic development perspective, uh, that the, the amount of money we're talking, $2,500, um, if it allows us to move forward with this issue. Um, but again, no change in the inspection, no change to the public's health. No, I recognize that. Alderman Braithwaite. Wait, me. Oh, sorry, okay. Judy. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> You've got us all agitated. Yeah, we're all, we're all worried down here. Um, I, this clearly needs to pay for itself. And I'm assuming from the uh, numbers that the uh, department staff gave us these are the numbers that make this program pay for itself um, and if we are going to ensure that the people shopping at the farmers market are are going to be provided with healthy goods that have been inspected it clearly has to pay for itself cookie lady um, well is this the cookie lady cookie lady okay um, I I appreciate everyone that comes and has a business at the farmer's market, and I'm assuming that you and your fellow vendors are there to make money, <coughs> and that, and I appreciate that you're making your cookies in a licensed facility, but obvious, obviously, every time you make a packaged product, there's inherent questions that come along with that. What's in your product? Are there, is there anything in your product? Is it going to be labeled um, appropriately so that people who have allergies will know what to buy and what not to buy and I'm sure that's what you're doing and I'm sure that's what anyone working at your stand would be doing also. We need the city to verify that. We just need to make sure that everything is labeled properly so that anyone with allergies who might be affected um, would know prior to purchase. Um, as a as a point of, of, uh, of information, um, we have stopped selling uh, prepared dog biscuits, home prepared dog biscuits in our store because of the problems with mold growth and other things because they're not, they, because having been packaged, that facilitates mold growth. And uh, we've just found that it's difficult uh, working with uh, private vendors who make, um, make these dog biscuits to, and even vendors who prepare um, um, freeze dried or dehydrated um, biscuits. When they make them at home, it's a problem. So I know you're making yours in a licensed facility. I, I just feel that to protect the, the, the health of our, our citizens, we just really need to not only make, make sure everything's inspected, but also to make sure that it's paying for itself. And like Alderman Wynn, I really question the, um, the wisdom of taking any money from the Economic Development Fund to pay for 
the cost of inspections. So I'd ask staff to take another look at the cost and see if we haven't overstated it. And if we haven't overstated it, then I would stick with what it was. <coughs> Thank you, Alderman Braithwaite. Uh, just a quick question to the health department. Uh, have we had any incidents of uh, food poisoning? We have had outbreaks of foodborne illness, yes. At particularly the farmer's market? Not at the farmer's market in Evanston. Okay. Not since I've been here since 2005. Okay. So when you break down the, that 293, uh, Alderman uh, <coughs> Melissa Wynn mentioned it, so it's $48 a month and basically 1223 a week that we're passing along to, to each of the, of the vendors, which I don't think sounds like a lot of money. I okay. guess I'd go back to the cookie lady. Uh, is 1223 a week for whatever revenue that you generate for your sales, is that an unreasonable amount to have to pay for a health inspection fee? Could you go to the mic? Hi. I was told that each of the cookies had to be wrapped and labeled with all of the ingredients. So I'm coming to the market with them in that condition. So basically w the inspection is looking at the cookies and making sure there's a label on everything that I have there. And it's, I'm doing the same thing week after week. So I don't understand why that would have to occur $12 a week for every week when it's the same thing. Nothing is changing. Alderman Wilson. Thank you. A couple of points. First of all, I do want to make sure that it's clear that we don't create the perception that we're attacking our health department or our inspectors. Um, I feel like the tone is, it's taken on that tone. And these are people that are simply doing their jobs, they're following the state regulations, and they're basically doing what we told them to do. So to attack them or infer that they're somehow, uh, they're not doing timesheets, it's not like their attorneys filling out time records, uh, the way I understand that these are estimates or averages based on, uh, on what they're doing. And um, I have no interest in attacking them for, for simply doing their job the way they're supposed to be doing it. I agree that the, the fee should cover the cost of the program. Uh, I feel strongly about that. It, it, we have three inspectors. From my observation is that they are very overworked as it is. Uh, it's difficult to get the job done in the first place. If they're going out on a Sunday, um, we don't pay straight time for Sundays or Saturdays. These are, these are off hours, and these are when the inspections have to occur. So I agree with Alderman Wynn that this should cover the cost of the program, and I, I wouldn't support any reductions that would go, be, go below that. For, for unique examples like someone who's already in the system on a weekly basis and being inspected if they come to one other event, uh, perhaps it would be appropriate to adjust that, that one-off event for them because they are already in the system. And, uh, but as far as across the board cuts, I, I wouldn't support that either. Thank you, Alderman Burris. Yeah, um, Older moon, I've, I've lived in other countries too, but and eaten in farmers markets there. So just to let you know, you're not the only one. Um, and the tone is about being honest and transparent. This fee structure that was put before us, I would like to have a survey, an anonymous survey of the vendors. What happens at your inspection? Are you inspected six times, and is that inspector there an hour? each time. I'm not talking about us suddenly um, paying, we're, we're asking for more money than we're really putting out. So what I am requesting is effort reporting. Exactly what you said, Alderman Wilson. We are not being honest about how much time our inspectors are putting out for each of these inspections. So I want to see. How much time are they really, and I want a, a survey from our vendors. Are our inspectors really there that often? As you just heard from one of our vendors, they show up, they pick up the cookie, they look at the packaging, and they're on their way. If it takes more than a minute and a half, I would be shocked. 
coffee, for example. Sure, things can go wrong. How could you possibly be there for an hour? I don't think we should take money out of the Economic Development Fund. I think we need to do a lot more with that. But we can't just make up numbers. And we have to find a way to do flex time. We have, we're paying people double time on a Sunday. We're paying people time and a half. If we know that it's coming up for the summer, we can do flex time. And it's not $12 a week for all farmers markets. The downtown farmers market runs, I believe, seven to nine weeks longer than Ridgeville or probably Central Street will or West End Market. These are all different. And if you're looking at the number of people that come to each of these markets, the people in the downtown market are making far more money than the people at these other markets. So basically we're driving those other markets out of business. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have inspections. I'm saying that we should be reasonable about it and be honest. These fees are not honest. Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Director Thomas, Mr. Keneva, y you work in this every day. Um, and you have a pretty good idea, I think, of how our regulations and state regulations make sense or don't make sense for regulation of our farmers markets. Uh, Central Street's going to get a new farmers market midweek, uh, part of the day, I think, three to seven, beginning June 1st. And I know some of those vendors have concerns about uh, the health inspection fees. I'm not sure they all understand that most of them will be exempt from those fees. Uh, so we'll make sure and, and get that information to them. Um, but to um, City Manager Bobkowitz, uh, you, you mentioned perhaps putting together a plan for analyzing our actual costs for inspections and incorporating <coughs> that into the reality of those costs into a fee schedule for inspections that don't undermine our interest in promoting farmers markets but ensure the safety of the food sold at those markets and recover our costs. Yeah. Um, can we do that? And then... My, my, Alderman Grover, members of the, the council. What's the plan and when would we come back to discuss this? If, uh, I don't the, know if we're going to resolve it tonight. I, I, I think it was my recommendation that we would do this as part of the budget process. Um, if the council would like us to drop other assignments and, and, and focus on this, we can. Uh, my suggestion was for a compromise for the current year um, because the reality of the time that would be involved in order to do that, I think, uh, as Alderman Burris has said, I would like to see a little bit more of some actual time cards as we move forward this summer. Um, in the meantime, we're not collecting revenue because I've asked the staff not to collect revenue from uh, those markets that have not yet started, while those that have already started have already paid for the year. So I was looking for a middle ground solution here that would give us the flexibility to come back and do this right, um, reflecting the changes, um, but also be mindful of our fiscal realities. So. Um, I'm a little hard pressed to come up with a third alternative here. Um, we could certainly, you know, subject all of the, the markets to the, the uh, inspections and then bill them after the fact. I mean, that is not a standard thing we do with other city services, um, so I'm reluctant to, to make that recommendation. But I think what's most important is moving forward and doing this correctly, as others in the council have said, to make sure we accurately look at what has changed in the, the climate of how these vendors operate in Evanston and come back with a, a, a real today uh, estimate as to what that costs. Uh, unfortunately, I think that's going to take a little time, and these markets are here and now. And City Manager, if I may add, um, what we found historically um, is that many, um, what you do in brick and mortar is different what we're learning, how our vendors operate in the market. It's not um, the exact same operation and it's not food preparation. I wish I could say that a food establishment that's licensed by the health department operates the same when they're in an event. It, historically, it hasn't happened that way. Also, historically, we gave you an average of the time that we spend um, on vendors. It's not a hard and fast, we're there an hour. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but we just gave you an average of the time. We also gave you an average of the number of inspections. Some vendors, it takes more uh, to get them compliant because we want to be helpful. And we try to um, reach out to vendors that we know about ahead of time to give that, that kind of uh, monitoring so we won't have to cease and desist in operations because we know that it can challenge 
the economy or the revenue for, for that vendor. So I just wanted you to be mindful that there are foods that fall in different risk categories. Um, and so, no, our inspectors aren't looking at um, just a physical cookie. They're, they're assessing the ingredients because some of the ingredients fall into a different level of risk. Um, and that's what uh, we operate from, from the state guidelines. There's risk, there's me low, medium, and high. So I just wanted to add that additional information again what we presented to you was the average time, the average number of inspections, and just be mindful that different ingredients uh, create different levels of hazards to the public. So our goal is really to, as your goal is to provide uh, food safety and not to um, make money or challenge vendors um, as they try to operate. Thank you. Alderman Rainey? Alderman Holmes? Um, two things. One, I'm sorry, two things. One, um, if you're making cookies uh, and you're doing it at a facility, a uh, licensed facility, um, do we inspect that facility? You Annually, know, yes. Annually? Correct. Okay, and um, so that Different if areas. somebody says that they are using a now we're a cooking establishment, say, yes. to do their baked goods. Mm -hmm. uh, and they bake the cookies and they put the ingredients and everything. Uh, d how do we, I mean, I know we go inspect it, maybe even the first time see them there Correct. making that. Correct. The possibility, um, and you know, if we're being honest and transparent, I mean, somebody could also decide just to bake them at home and put the same ingredients and stuff on. Correct. Is that correct? Okay, and so my second question then is that, and only because I did a lot the first couple of years with Western Market, I know the inspectors when they come out, um, they are looking not only, it depends on what foods you're looking at. Correct. If you're, um, um, say if they have to come out and check the temperatures or something that's being cooked, how long? I mean, so they may come, if your market is open, say from 10 to two, they may come twice or three times during that time just to check temperatures and stuff. And I've been through that kind of inspection. So I think you have to sort of walk through it. Um, so it's not just, uh, you know, the hour may add up in terms of three visits or two <coughs> visits or Correct. what have you. So that uh, I think that when, when we get a report back that um, we need to look at all those aspects of sure. what might happen. I and agree. My, my, right, mm -hmm. and my last thing is that I still, can you just walk me through one more time Sure. the bakeries um, because I know we had just we made changes in terms of how that happened we used to have one set of rules for the bakeries because it was only certain bakeries and we expanded that is that not correct I, I'm looking at Mr. Gaynor only because we talked about it <laughs> uh, when it was going on but so you're you're in checking the bakeries all the time say it's um, tags or it's uh, business or what have you and they are um, being inspected, and they bring not other things, but they bring their baked goods there, sealed and everything to sell. And they still pay then the fee for the inspection there, as well as a fee for their establishment at Davis and, and Maple. Do if, they, if they participate, if they. Um participate in a temporary food event, there's a fee that does. I understand yeah. about temporary, but this will be the markets. I'm just, because I didn't understand that. I'm, I'm having a hard time processing it in my head because that's not the way I thought it was. Are you asking about the seasonal permit fee for the farmer's market? That is an additional fee, yes. Oh, okay. For the, ins not the, not the farmer's market fee. I'm talking about the, the health inspection. inspection fee. Well, it's a, it's a package. If they're participating in the farmer's market and they're already a food establishment or a bakery, right? Is that what you're asking yeah. me? And then when they um, um, fill out another permit to participate in the seasonal food event, which lasts six months, they do incur an additional fee. Right. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize that. I thought that that was just, yes. How, how much is the fee? 225. 225. 225. Okay. Alderman Wilson. And again, that's for the farmer's market that's downtown. 27 Saturdays or something. Like yeah, it, that's it is downtown additional market. 225. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Yes, additional 225. Right. And just to be clear, 
if there are equitable adjustments to be made in the fee structure, I think that makes sense. That's perfectly fair. But I do want to make sure that whatever it nets out at, it covers the cost. And the last point is I just want to reiterate, I, I haven't seen anything that's dishonest or not honest about the fees or the way the staff handles the inspections or the process. So I just want to make sure that, uh, that we do not have the inference that there's any, uh, anything dishonest whatsoever about the, at least that's my view about the process. Thank you. Alderman Burris? Yeah, I've, I've just been handed here a note from Ridgeville. Uh, they're waiting for s us to make a decision on this. For Six other vendors may not come back. Uh, their market starts June 1st. And once again, I know most of you don't participate in the Ridgeville market and you're not in South Evanston, um, but it is a big deal for South Evanston. And, and uh, responding to Alderman Wilson, the honesty factor is about the time when you put down on a timesheet or you put down on a fee, you need to be <coughs> honest about really that time. I'm not saying that individual inspectors are dishonest. What I'm saying is the fee structure is not transparent and honest in how we did this breakdown was my point. Alderman Tendon. A, a question to the Ridgeville folks. Um, is there, this seems to be that there's also a Ridgeville park charge for participating in the market, which makes this total package the most expensive in the city. Is that correct? No, the, the fee that the vendors pay to Ridgeville is 325. It's much less than the 800 that the. Okay, so it is a, a shorter season, smaller fee. Yeah. 325? <coughs> 325 for the season? Yeah. Whoa. What is the city? 800. Oh, the city is 800. I mean, I understand that. I hate to tell you what West End is, but that's okay. What is West End? They just charge you at the table. It's okay. <laughs> right. I, I didn't realize that. But each each market has their own Everything own fee schedule. So maybe that's yeah. I would suggest that gives you another idea of where to look to get mm -hmm. your fees reduced. Mm-hmm. Um, Alderman Fisk. Yes, sir. Yes. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, could we have from city staff a breakdown of the cost for every farmer's market? I would really like to have that. I don't think I've seen that. I'm sorry, breakdown of So of at the, oh, no, at the downtown farmer's market, um, folks are paying $800 for, to participate and have a booth in the downtown farmer's market. Is Which is separate and apart from the health inspector. Is that, is right, that right, a right. Yeah. No. 850. 850 for the market that we operate at the 27 dates downtown. And that, okay. and that and is so the only market we operate completely with city forces is the downtown market. We provide, we provide assistance uh, with the west side market, which is ECDC. Um, we were providing informal assistance this year with that. We we're providing informal assistance with the Central Street. Uh, we don't provide really any assistance with the Ridgeville from the operation of their market. And then the YMCA, which we've not talked right. about, right. Uh, they also have a small market. Yeah, so really tiny. so um, th each and one of those markets charge a separate fee to cover their costs for the facilities. Uh, Ridgeville has their own facility. Uh, ECDC operates there. So, um, you know, th th those costs vary. Uh, the length of time varies, so it's difficult. We could put together a, I'd, I'd a, like a to table yeah. with the cooperation of the other operators. I think Mr. Uh, Webb was here earlier. He's uh, pretty well plugged in with them, as is Mr. Gaynor, uh, so we could come back. Um, Madam Mayor, so I'm a little bit in a quandary as to what to do. Um, well, you've I've, been given completely conflicting direction. I've I don't been see given why you have problems. Uh, <laughs> what I think I hear the council saying is that you would like to make sure that the fees that are charged uh, represent the efforts that are required to protect the public safety, that you'd like us to look at the fee structure. Um, we have what, Mr. Farrar, 28, 29 different kind of liquor licenses. Uh, perhaps we can have three or four different types of farmer's market permits, um, depending. I think I'm hearing that poultry and meat probably fall into one category. Um, baked goods fall into a different category. Um, uh, empanadas, whatever the other thing was that uh, on the more prepared foods probably is a third category. Um, and we're happy to do that. Um, if the council feels that there is urgency here, um, we can do our best in three weeks' time to come back with an entirely new structure. Um, it will not be based, uh, I think, on good data because, quite honestly, we have not been collecting uh, that the kind of precise data that I think you're all 
craving for this evening at all of the farmers markets because again the the downtown is different than ridgeville is different than the west side which we can absolutely do um, but we cannot do that in three weeks so if you'll give us more time then the quandary is what do we do now because ridgeville is starting now i would imagine june first june first i believe the central street markets uh, June 1st date. Um, the, the Buku has already started. No, West End is um, June 4th. Okay, so uh, that's three that will start prior to your next meeting. Um, that leaves the Y, and I don't know what their schedule is. And did I miss any? And when the downtown one started several weeks ago. Um, we could, the council could, could leave the direction as is that. Alderman Fisk has a question. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going to suggest that we prorate the, the charges until you're able to come back and do it, um, use Alderman Braithwaite's numbers, um, $12 and what, 23 cents, um, 93 cents, um, and prorate that rather than trying to reduce the rate, come reimburse people, then come back and possibly find that in fact the numbers are correct. So you're saying that we would institute rather than an annual charge, a weekly charge until such until, time? Until, 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 until you have the information something. ready for council. Another la la yeah. layer. <laughs> Refunding money is a layer too. Absolutely. Refunding money. Um. Alderman Wynn. Uh, how many days, uh, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. How many dates yeah. are the, is the Ridgeville market open? 20 markets. So it's not that many fewer than. 27 for the downtown. Okay. Uh, and you said six vendors would not return. Would that be six that meet that fall under this inspection? Uh, yes, those are the the six vendors who would have to pay the two hundred and twenty five dollar fee. Did they pay it last year? Well, some of them um, are new vendors who I mean, I get phone calls all the time from potential vendors who once I tell them that we that Evanston has this um, fee, they're shocked and because, as the city manager mentioned, this is not something common for the surrounding areas. So, um, you know, some of them are new vendors who are wanting to come but sort of balking at the price, and then some of them who are vendors from last year who struggled um, to make ends meet and want to come back but are, you know, hesitant. Can you describe the, the types of vendors that are thinking about coming? Yes, well, three of them are baked goods, mm -hmm. um, and we have the coffee, we have uh, the eggs, um, and uh, who am I missing? Oh, cook, I'm sorry, four of them are baked goods and eggs and then coffee. Thanks. Alderman you, Rainey, sorry. <laughs> I'll put you on the list, but it's a long well, list. Can I ask one more question? Yes. Madam Mayor, I'm thinking that why can't, why can't we do our study, those who've paid have paid, do our study for the, for the markets that haven't started yet. After we do our study about what a fair fee is, charge them at the end of the season and let them know if, you know, they, I know it's a risk that they won't pay, but if they don't pay, then they won't be subject to inspection next year and not allowed to participate. I mean, I, I just think all this bookkeeping is just such a nightmare. Um, I, I think if you haven't yet been assessed a fee, let it go until we come up with the fee and then assess it and make no promises. But the effort should be to structure <coughs> fees so that they are affordable and that uh, they do cover the cost. Alden Rainey, may I ask you a question? Yeah. The guy with the meat Sorry. shouldn't pay the same as the person with a right. wrapped up cookie. I, I agree, yeah. Alden Rainey, but and may I ask you a question? So you would, you under your idea then, would the folks who haven't paid yet, would they be then billed at the end of yes, the season? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. And it under, would be made under, very clear that Under the, a new scheme under so the that new the cookie scheme. lady doesn't get billed and, for the and, same amount that the... Yes, mm -hmm. and then the, under the new scheme, those who paid more, you know, we could just let them have a deduction for the following year. So, I mean, this business of returning I money that. and... It just makes no sense to me. I do think the but you know what? We have this brilliant guy in the audience, Marty Lyons, and all of his crew. 
they can figure out this finance thing. Ms. Thomas can figure out the inspection thing. The city manager oversees them. They can figure it out. I think the message is clear. We should pay for our services, not eliminate inspections, and just try to make it affordable. Make it simple, not a bureaucratic it's nightmare. Just, it's, Alderman Wynn, did you get your last so question asked? All right, Alderman Fisk? No, I'm done. Alderman Holmes? I'll pass. All right, no seeing no further lights, I would like the name of the cookie lady so you are not referred to as the cookie <laughs> lady in the minutes. <laughs> it's Andrea Katz. Thank you very much. <laughs> she, she's uh, so competition. I want to know who she is. Um, and I would like to thank the health department. I, too, think you do a wonderful job, and you are certainly doing the job we've asked you to do. So thank you very much for all your good work. And it's still not resolved, is it? Uh, no, it's still not resolved, okay. City Manager. Uh, well, let me try again. When you left, you figure it out without you? I was just trying to try to hear. Um, okay. I believe I, what I'm hearing from the council is that you like farmers markets and you would like them to continue in the city of Evanston. Uh, that you have one farmers market, you have all well, three farmers markets getting ready to start now. Um, in talking with our health department staff, um, it is critical that we uh, get these applications in regardless because regardless who pays or how much they pay, there is work that these, uh, that our, uh, that our health department staff members need to do. So what I would suggest is that we move forward, that the Ridgeville uh, folks con have their vendors contact the health department, that that process begin now. Um, the 10-day the normal period is already, we're already into that a little bit, so that will require additional work and additional <laughs> overtime of our staff to get that all together, but we'll go ahead and handle that um, so that we can have the Ridgeville, the West Side, um, the Y, and the Central Street Farmers Markets ready to go. We will telegraph that information to them. Um, we will move forward uh, without a new fee schedule. Um, we will ask the council to give us until your second regular meeting, well, uh, until the meeting of June 20th to come back to you uh, with a new scheme for multiple type permits um, that we will come back to you with as best data as we can gather from our experience at, at the downtown market as well as these other satellite markets. Uh, those permits will be um, flavored as discussed this evening, so those with the greatest potential for hazard, which I think we can identify, um, will be under one set of, uh, of fees, those with less hazard another, so my guess is it's a minimum three or four uh, different kinds of, of, of uh, permit schemes. Uh, we will then come to you with that on June the 20th. Um, we would ask then for those who have not paid fees, uh, if the council is in agreement with the new structure, um, that those would be uh, a retroactive uh, based on the new fee structure. We would ask the people at that time to pay those fees as agreed to, and if there's any adjustments that would be required uh, for those that have already paid fees, that we would do that um, once the council has decided on a new fee scheme. So how does that sound? Sounds good to me. Everybody loves it, moving right along. <laughs> but we would ask that the operators of the markets get with the health department so that those applications can be put in. And uh, Mr. Gaynor has a question. Well, I have more of a, of a comment. Um, when the, some of the farmers, the organic farmers, uh, came to us and suggested that we do a Central Street Market, uh, we talked about uh, waiving all their fees in order as a pilot program to get them up and running. And those are different kinds of fees. Well, so thank you for muddying the waters, Mr. Gaynor. Well, <laughs> I'd rather do it now before well, all of this. It was already settled prior to that, and as we had discussed with the, with the ward alderman, the <coughs> fees associated with our staff time in starting up on facilities that we owned, we were going to come up with an alternate path for, um, but that was not including the health fees. I, I think we have a plan. Well, I just yeah, thank you, thank you, for Mr. The waters. <laughs> All right, moving right along. Call of the wards, Alderman Burris. Thank you. Uh, thanks again to the Ridgeville for being so outspoken and bringing this to our attention as a huge problem. Uh, 
Thanks again. Also, Ridgeville Park District um, has an opening for a commissioner that you can apply for. So go to their website. They're accepting applications until June 3rd. Is that true? Yes. Great. Um, and finally, and most importantly, uh, I want to thank the Evanston Police and NORTAF, um, as well as community members who helped with the homicide investigation of the cab driver uh, that was shot in the Ninth Ward on May 15th. Uh, the identification of the suspect and arrest are a direct result of the outstanding collaboration between Evanston Police and NORTAF. Um, this illustrates the excellence in our law enforcement personnel, from police officers to detectives to forensic specialists. As always, they have my gratitude and steadfast support for the work they do every day to protect our community from these senseless acts of violence. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Fisk. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I want to remind everyone that the quarterly First Ward meeting is coming up on June 7th. That's Tuesday at the Evanston Public Library, the large community meeting room between 7 and 9 p.m. We hope to see you all there. Thank you, Alderman Braithwaite. Um, I'd just like to quickly thank the mayor and also the city staff, Steve Griffin, Economic Development, Annette Logan, Economic Development, Suzette Robinson, Doug Gaynor, Marty Lyons, also the police and fire department, and all the many uh, residents of the second ward as well as the businesses association that came out to support uh, making it happen this weekend. It was a wonderful event. Friday we had approximately about 300 folks and, and we had about 200 folks on uh, on, on Saturday as well, despite the weather. So again, a round of thank you, as well as to our sponsors, uh, the planning committee. Um, as well, uh, this Thursday, uh, the second ward, I plan on hosting a meet and greet uh, from 6.30 to 8.30. You are all invited to attend. It's gonna be at a second ward restaurant, Panino's, located in the Dempster Street Plaza. And uh, hopefully you can all make it there. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wynn. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I want to uh, let you all know that several of us, uh, Alderman Braithwaite, Alderman Rainey, and I think that was the three of us, were um, went to Few Spirits recently. Uh, it just opened up, and we had a really interesting uh, learning experience and what it's like to distill spirits. Uh, we... <laughs> Uh, I, I can say I dipped my finger in it, but it wasn't, it wasn't, I think Alderman Rain, yeah, several times, that's right, right. Uh, I think some of the stuff we tasted would make, it, it was early in the process, I'd say it would make an excellent hand cleaner, right, 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 Alderman Rain, but it was still early in the process, but it is a beautiful space, and uh, I think by now, he probably has some very fine spirits, so uh, when, when it's up and running, we urge you all to go. And uh, I'm sure that he has uh, customers in Alderman Rainey and Alderman Braithwaite and me uh, for a very long time to come. It's it's great. Uh, Paul Letko is you know one of our one of our own, and I urge you all to support him. And he was really patient through our long long process. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wilson. I wanted to thank. Uh, Bela Nestaran for all of her hard work with Gray Park and as well as our city staff and everyone else who helped out there. Uh, she's been engaged in a process of uh, finding grant money and doing cleanup, so she's done a wonderful job so far and is continuing with, with those efforts. So I just wanted to recognize her for all of that uh, hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Holmes. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to give a, um, for all of, of my fellow, all the people, and for the citizenry out there on your calendar for June 4th to put down the mayor's uh, summit for a safe summer, uh, which will be at the Levy Center. Um, and um, this is important because we really do need to uh, work together as a community to figure out what we're gonna do for and with our youth um, this summer, but also to have some long range plans as well. So we'll be at the Levy Center at 10 o'clock on June 4th. Thank you, Alderman Holmes. Alderman Tendon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I did save this for a call of awards as to not muddy the waters. Um, I, I think, you know, as a community, we embrace these farmers markets, and I'd like to 
Uh, I know there are, is a waiting list for the main market. I know that it's uh, the same group that likes to uh, come back every year. It does limit the expansion of the market. So I would like to uh, refer to s uh, staff that we look at some ways of expanding um, it, because I think that it, it's something we need to encourage. And I think that if people are waiting to get into the main market, it could be very discouraging. So um, hooray for the markets. <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Two events to announce. Uh, tomorrow night, the ETHS chapter of the NAACP is hosting a Stop the Violence, Stop the Funerals, Start the Peace, Start the Love campaign community meeting beginning at 6 o'clock in room A241 at Evanston Township High School. It's open to the public. Please go if you can. Uh, room A241 is in the southwest corner of the school on the second floor. And on June 7th, uh, the Central Street Neighbors Association and I are meeting with uh, the developer of 1700 Central Street, the building where the Evanston Theater used to be. We're hoping, looking to move ahead, maybe even in 2011, on uh, the project that's being proposed there. And it's looking as if it's going to be a rental building. Um, not a condominium building with some really good features and we've been consulting with the Central Street Neighbors Association on what they envision for that space. The developer's been very responsive. So on June 7th, we will be meeting to look at some of the plans, pro formas, and some of the numbers associated with that proposed project. It will be at the Evanston Ecology Center beginning at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Alderman Rainey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd like to invite the new chamber uh, director, Eve Doy, to our Economic Development Committee meeting on Wednesday night at 633 Howard Street at the Police Outpost. Um, one of the main items on our agenda, and this will be a full committee meeting and the public is invited, um, main item on our agenda, one of them, will be the plans going forward for Howard Street. Um, Tomorrow, very exciting, uh, we're meeting with two different theaters for the building that we bought at 727 Howard. And in the afternoon, we are meeting with five volunteer local architects who are willing to commit time and effort to the redevelopment of the property, um, including a very famous firm known as Schuller and Shook. They're theater and lighting design firm from downtown uh, to help us move forward with establishing uh, polarity ensemble theater at the uh, site. Finally, and, and very sadly, um, I'd like to wish the family of the young man who was killed in Rogers Park, who was an 8th Ward resident, um, Omar Esteban, um, our deepest sympathies on the part of all 8th Ward people and I'm sure the members of the council. So um, if the family needs anything, they can let us know and we'll be glad to help in any way we can. So thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Rainey. I know this will come as a shock, but Alderman Wilson, we do not need a motion. We just need a motion to adjourn. I can do that. Move to adjourn. <laughs> thank you, Alderman Wilson. City Clerk. <coughs> Alderman Burris. Aye. Alderman Fisk. Aye. Alderman Braithwith. Aye. Alderman Wynn. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tindum. Aye. Alderman Grover. Aye. Alderman Rainey. Aye.